guys, this is Jordi from Forward 2020. So, I'm waiting for takeout. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about which is the best slicer, and I know when I ran all the groups and asked around which one they thought was the best slicer and why they used it. And the reason I did this is because my expertise usually improves us. So, if you're driving a Prusa style clone or your machine is a Prusa style machine, you should know that Prusa himself collaborated with SLIC3R slicer in making a slicer that is specific for Prusa clones, for Prusa style machines. So, with that being said, I'm gonna finish waiting for my food and as soon as I'm done here, we'll get started on the computer. Do you ever just die inside? What do you mean, like cancer? <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Uh, no, I guess not. Oh. Uh, wait, are we still recording? Uh, <laughs> still waiting wait. for the food, people. Am I supposed to stop this? Oh, okay. Hey. Um, okay. Awesome, thank you. All right, let's go. All right, so the first step we're gonna visit is printer settings. Unless you are running a Mark II Mark 42 bed, I want you to go right here and change it to your, to your settings. In my case, it will be 300, but I'm going to use the most common one, 200 by 200. Now, if you have multiple extruders, you turn this on here. If you have a um, single nozzle, you just click right here. If you have Octoprint Upload, you can input your information right here. I don't know anything about the Octoprint Upload. I use Reveteer host and servers, so I can't help you with that one. Here, super important, whatever firmware you put up here, make sure it matches. If you're doing Marlin, make sure it matches. Uh, if you're using Reptile software, also Sailfish. Whatever you're using, make sure that this matches your settings. All right. Um, that's pretty much it for this particular one. And let's go ahead and move to the custom G code. Now, this is again for the Mark 42. I want you to go ahead and erase most of these. Because most of that, unless you have the same coordinates, will not work, correct? So, the first one you want to put is G28, because that's your humming before it starts printing. If you have out of bed level, you will turn G29. If you have out of mesh, you have G80. You get the idea. So, and if you have an introductory line, you basically write it right here whatever coordinates and distance you wanted to cover with the startup line. The, these ones here, those are good commands. Um, usually that, well, we, you will run an ENG code. This one, if your bed is smaller or uh, bigger, you would have to change here. This basically tells it right here, go home in the X, uh, to stay at home, to stay where it is in the Z, but push the bed forward as to present the print towards you for you to be able to pull it off the bed. Let's move to extruder. So, here you'll set up your nozzle diameter, right? Your aperture and your nozzle, whatever it comes out. If you have a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, whatever you use, you'll write that down here. Um, layer height limits, don't mess with that right now. Um, you probably want to set everything that is set up like that mathematically. Where crucial, you want to leave it like that. Try the program out, see how you like it, and then move on from there. If you have um, multi-material extruders, you have multiple extruders and they have to have an offset for the nozzle. There you go, right here. Your retraction. If you have balding, you're going to have to be more because the balding itself puts pressure on the filament and it creates over extrusion. So, um, lift C, that means C hot. Basically, the nozzle will move up as soon as it clears a layer or an item to move to the next layer or item. So, I see not to touch any of the edges where it has already printed, they're covered now. So you can see it's higher or lower, whatever you want. Um, basically, the measurement, the speed, so on. And that pretty much concludes this part. Now, I want you to go ahead and hit the save button. And we're gonna name this your machine. You can name it whatever you want. Again, just putting that as an example. Hit end, or the OK, and then um, fill in settings. So, here you set your temperatures. Now, Prusa has preset a bunch of materials and some generics. Uh, for the generic values, I think these are a little high, but again, some people print with these temperatures fine. I usually print with lower cooler temperatures, specifically with the polylactic acid. Um, cooling, 
you want it, when you want it to start, if you want it to start after three layers, five layers, you know, whatever, which speeds you want it to use. Um, advanced is basically whatever material you're using. You kind of give the properties for the material and Prusa kind of have worked out some of those for you. So, um, custom G code would be if you want it to do something before it changes layer or before it starts and ends the print with this filament setting, you want it to change the value of, um, for example, if you have linear advance, you can put here your linear advance code. So when you print with this material, you know that you don't have to mess with your linear advance. It's gonna be changed automatically because the code is already here. Um, for example, you write M900, K50 for PLA in my case. And if it was an ABS, I'll write that to 75, turning out my setting for what my ABS prints best. All right. Uh, let's move into print settings. Um, this is the fun part. I want to spend some time with these because here's where you adjust most of the settings for your actual model, right? Your actual print. So, um, layer height. Um, first layer, you can set it here and you can set all other layers. There is also a place on the platter where you can set, um, you have custom G codes and also there's a way to adjust your layer settings I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, vertical shells, if you think your walls are too thin and you want it to be thicker or you want it to get some clarity, if you want translucent materials, um, usually add more perimeters that are matched together as in the setup infill. And you'll adjust that here, spiral base or with the vast mode, you just click right here, this goes to one, so it goes to zero and your infill goes to zero. Um, if you get pillowing on your prints on top, here's where you adjust to add more top layers. Um, quality control right here, it makes the slicing slower and it makes the print a bit slower also. Extra perimeters if needed, pretty self-explanatory. Um, ensure vertical shell thickness. So basically you tell it the model that it has to be four, but it needs five for each to get the model length. It's not going to ask, it's just going to go ahead and, and make whatever it has to do. Um, detecting thin walls also is going to try to reinforce the place where it thinks it needs to need more material right away as it supports the entire model. And the tech region perimeters basically starts two points where it's going to bridge as instead of just start from the rectilinear, it will try to start a base for it to have a support on its own within the model. Okay. Uh, Seam position. A lot of the people ask me, what are these little pimples that I get? Well, when you get retraction, you also get air. And then also remember this is uh, a fluid at this point, the plastic is behaving like a liquid. So when you pull, there's going to be pressure differentials. So you're going to suck air in. And when you start printing, then you're printing with air in for the very beginning. And then you'll start the line. So you have a little hole. And we call that the seam. Basically, where it starts the layer, right? Or the perimeter on the outside. Well, the way that you can line them up so you can, you know, take care of them. And if you want to remove them or sand them and you want them all in the same place, you can set that right here. Again, pretty self explanatory stuff. Infill, you can select um, your fill density if you want it 100% solid or you want to mostly hollow or hollow. Um, Fill pattern, basically, yeah. I know a lot of people are excited about the honeycomb, but there's a whole lot cooler stuff right here for you. Um, if you want to add the same pattern, some of these patterns to the top layer and the bottom layer, I seem to give it a, a accent piece, if you will. You can do that right here. Um, the next settings are for speed. If you wanted to combine infill, how many layers, instead of trying to go back, it will start a certain combination point um, if you wanted to only infill where it thinks your print needs it a lot of the times this is a fantastic setting if you're doing a single layer print that is big um, solid infill if you wanted how many times you wanted to how many layers you wanted to do a solid layer if you don't want to just do it zero fill angle again which direction so on so forth um, let's move to skirt and brim 
skirt and brim, let's start with the brim. So, when at the base of the model, a brim will be added layers towards the outside on the shape of the model itself, right? So as if you were putting tape on the outside of the print, basically you're making the bottom first layer as big as it can be, and then the rest of the layers start where it's supposed to start. And then when you remove your print, usually they stay on the bed that you can just rip it apart because it's only one layer height. That's the first thing we suggest to people to do before they start adding Aquanet or all um, PVA glue. Um, the first thing you want to do is try the brim. The brim is in all the slicers. Funny story, the guy that taught me how to print, my very good friend Adam Herring was the one that invented these back in the day. Big shout out to you, Adam. So. Uh, this is the first thing you again would you want to try if for example if I'm printing nylon I use a combination in between a big brim and a little PBA glue uh, or act no I'm not gonna lie I don't use act on it so it's a little PBA glue the purple glue stick works like a charm um, skirt is a sacrificial line basically that primes the nozzle and it shows you the area where the printer is going to print so there is a setting here where you can make that a wall around your print. So if you're printing with ABS the first time, it will help to keep um, air from hitting the print, which causes the lamination faster on um, ABS, all right? Um, so again, little cool trick setting that will help you start learning how to print on ABS. So let's move to support material. To generate your support material, all you have to do is click right here. Notice I have zero instead of 45. Here you tell the machine at what degree you want to begin laying support, what, what overhang it's going to need support. If you put zero, the machine will automatically decide where it needs to go. Um, that's an easier way to do it. Here you set up uh, your layer for your raft. If you use raft, I don't. Um, pattern that you want your support material to be set here how high do you want the contact with the z to be of the support material uh, if you want to build a sheet around it i made a mistake before and clicked that just to see what it did and basically the support material becomes a solid object because it has a wall around it um pattern spacing how far do you want um, if you're using pillars, for example, how far do you want the pillars to be away from each other? Angles, layers, and interface, basically, is how it's laid. And um, this one is my favorite, which I don't use rafts. I use this one. This one basically tells it, build support only to the plate, and the rest of it, let it unsupport it. And again, if you have like a sphere, this is the perfect setting because it basically creates a crate around it and then stops when the support is no longer necessary because the overhang has been reached. Alrighty, uh, so let's go ahead and move to speed. Now, I don't want you to touch anything here, and the reason I don't want you to do is because I'm making this video for you to try out Slicer 1 and Slicer can do for your Prusa clone. So if you go messing with these, you're actually changing how it works. Um, once you have used it and test all the settings that are here for you, then if you don't like something, then you can come and mess with the speeds. In the meanwhile, I will recommend you to leave it just CD try it out and then, you know, dial accordingly, if you will. Multiple extruders. Uh, here you command what extruder does what. It's very simple. Wipe tower. If you have multi materials, you might want to turn this on. They all come out of the same nozzle, right? A wipe tower basically creates a tower where it's dumped in the material to prime the nozzle with an X color. And advance. I'm not going to go into the other two. Advance here, it tells you the overlap of the layers, how much do you want it to flow when it's making a bridge. Um, if you want it to do uh, multiple multi process parts, uh, if you want it to compensate for like flat elephant food, a bunch of stuff here that usually you will compensate just by doing good layering. Simple. But here's in case you're having a lot of trouble, right? And here is your extrusion width. These numbers are your lies to do a mathematic equation to tell the machine how much material to push. So don't change any of these unless you have a different size nozzle and none of these will actually hold true to you. 
you will have to measure all these settings on yours to input here if you have a different size nozzle. All right. Um, well, that's pretty much for these ones. So we're gonna move to platter. This is my favorite part, slicer, because it's got a couple of cool little tricks I'm gonna show you now. So this is your plate. You can view whatever's on it in two dimensions. You can do a preview of what the slicer or the slice object is gonna look, and you're gonna do the actual layers too, and you can advance them to see what layers and what directions are gonna be laid down, right? So here I'm gonna make something simple. I already have something open that I was printing earlier. So I'm gonna to do this baby Groot body. So here's the baby Groot Ravager body. Um, here, as you can see, just by clicking it, I can move it to where I want it to print. By clicking it, I can also change directions or I can do it by degree. It's got, I right click on the model. I can change how it's laying on the plate which direction I want it to face, if I want it for strength or detail. It's fantastic here. You can mirror it, you can scale it. Uh, you can do a bunch of little cool things right here. If you want to cut it, you can ask if you want to keep the top or the bottom. Again, I, I really do like the slicer a lot. It seems a lot more complete than other ones. Anyways, so the fun part of these, if you have a single SDL, that has different models by clicking split, it'll split your model, right? It's, here's telling me it's one part, so we can't split it, but he tried to split it because it's a big file. He tried to look for places to split it. So, layer editing. You have something that high, high, high detail on, I don't know, something written across the chest, let's say, and it's got very high detail. So what you can do is literally find that spot and change the detail of the layer by doing what I'm doing. Notice it's going green. I'm making more layers, or basically I'm lowering the layer height as to make more detail just on that area. Notice how it changes also on the graph. When I get to the very top, that will be the minimum layer than the approach is calibrated for, which would be 0 0.05, right? And now you see what he did. Now I got the slice now. It's gonna take a little while, but here is gonna give me the two dimensions again of what it's gonna look like layer per layer. And here's gonna give me a previous one it's gonna look like in three dimensions, right? If I zoom in on it, you will notice the layer differential right here, right away on the graphics. And it shows you how much more detail you will actually have. So, I hope you find this video informative. More important, I hope you get great results with Slicer. Don't forget to leave comments in the bottom. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions about making other videos, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. See you around.